Thank you, <coughs> Sister Logan, for that. She's been given to see some marvelous things, hasn't she? Sharing with the brethren. I want to take this um, opportunity to thank the Lord for um, helping me to be able to comprehend some things in his parables that I, um, I think I had overlooked. And um, they're vital things to see. See, anytime Jesus speaks, the words that he says are vital for his people to imbibe and understand. See, they are, they're living and they're active and they're able to, um, to conform us, to help us to be transformed into his image. Now, the text before us, so this will be the, um, a conclusion in part to um, what I'm going to speak on the parables for right now. I'm moving on to um, a more general subject of the words of Jesus. There's a, there's a lot of things that Jesus says. His words, they have got to be understood. And, um, and I, I fear in the generation that we're in now that um, the vast majority of, of um, pro professed followers have not heeded or even imbibed the very words of Jesus. They've like fallen on ears that can't hear. And yet um, the Lord's provided an assembly of saints, and there, there, this assembly is all over the world. Uh, this, this one's just grouped together in this room. But there are people, there's a remnant throughout the whole earth that have a great, have placed Jesus' words at a very high priority. They, they love his words. They've given their life so they might serve this one named Jesus. Uh, this parable, um, it follows, in this context, it follows the healing of the ten lepers. Where, where are the, the nine? This that Jesus still talks like this. Jesus still feels like this. Where I did a work in more than just one. Where are the nine? Yeah. Is that Jesus doesn't let. He doesn't do anything. So it just it, it's, it's ambiguous. Jesus works, and his work is he's designed to do something. Remember, remember that, and um, says one of them. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, it is good to be able to see you're healed. When you see it, things happen. Amen. He turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. Now, Jesus had done the work. He glorified God in recognizing what Jesus had done. And, and Jesus says, were there not ten cleans, cleansed, but where are the nine? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner or stranger? He, he, he recognized him for who he was and recognized his faith. He came back. Now, on the heels of this, Jesus has asked a question of the Pharisees. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees or questioned of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Now, this is what the Pharisees are going to get. This is what the Pharisees are going to hear. Neither shall they say, Lo, here or lo, there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. And he said unto his disciples, The days will come when you shall desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and ye shall not see it. And they shall say to you, See here or see there, go not after them, nor follow them. For as lightning that goeth out of the one part under heaven shineth unto the other part under heaven, so shall also the Son of Man be in his day. Quite a compelling thought. Jesus opens up these, these group of thoughts that are just compelling to the child of God. Compelling. These phrases, the days of the Son of Man. We're living in the days of the Son of Man. He's been exalted to the right hand of the majesty on high. He's been given all power in heaven and earth. To, he's executing the Father's will. He's bringing many sons to glory. These are the days of the Son of Man. Oh, I tell you, on that day, on that last day, when he delivers the kingdom up to the Father, the Father's going to say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You, you've, you've brought many sons to glory. Now the work can begin. Now we can get started. Remember this great enterprise that we, we spoke one to another 
in the ages past of this thing we were going to do, this great salvation, this demonstration of, of my mercy, my compassion, my love. It had gone unseen for the ages past. Now, now we can we can open this up. This thing can flower in the ages to come. Jesus using these words to realign the focus off of worldly events and, and to realign the thinking of men to God. And these words will do it. Jesus' words will do it. They'll have the effect of taking your mind off of you and off of your little world and putting them on God Amen. and his eternal purpose. Now, this should not surprise us that Jesus has this capacity. Jesus is the most precise speaker. So we should expect when we give ourselves to his words that we'll be more specifically aligned with the eternal purpose of God. See, this will work in you both to will and to do of his purpose. God's eternal purpose is always contained in the doctrine of Jesus' words. Always. He doesn't do anything independent from the Father. Nothing. So it should not surprise us that his words reflect this purpose. To make men's minds be able to comprehend this eternal purpose. So we could say then that preachers would do well to tell us the words of Jesus. See, this is what we need to hear, the doctrines that Jesus has opened up. He, he's given us many things that pertain to life and godliness. Jesus' words are like containers that hold life. See, you can't have it without Jesus. But if you do have Jesus, you have life. Amen. He always brings you to the Father, in other words. He always shows you or reveals or or makes you to be able to grasp eternal realities. Jesus is speaking of a time when men will have forgotten all about what they had done unto him. Their minds had been darkened. They will have forgotten that they cast him off. They cast him off. And now God will cast them off. They'll forget the stripes that they laid on his back and they'll neglect to remember the profound words which Jesus spoke when he walked here among men. These words, he said one time, my words will never pass away, never pass away. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away, Amen. never. So see, it's his obvious conclusion. Well, then those that are gods, they hear his words. Now, it'll be at that time when life is seemingly going on just like yesterday. Nothing seems to be any different at all. He says immediately. This, is, this, this thing, we, what we've seen in the parables, see, all the parables are saying basically the same thing. They're basically showing men that you're not capable. You don't have the capacity in and of yourself to be ready. But if you give yourself to me, if you walk in the spirit, you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. You'll be, you'll be ready to stand before the Son of Man. I will have made you ready to where you can actually, I, it can be a good thing that you're standing at the judgment instead of a, a bad thing. Now, the question that they put to Jesus was this. When the kingdom of God should come, when? Is there signs? In other places, is there some signs you could give us? Well, we know an evil generation seeks after signs, but, but there are some signs. But Jesus is going to reveal something that they don't really understand what Jesus is going to say to them. He says the kingdom of God doesn't come with observation. Mm -hmm. And yet they want, to, they want some observation. They want to be able to see, all right, now it's time to really get serious. We've lived our lives sloppily, but we want something. We want to know when should we be serious. It's okay, I'll tell you. It'll be just like in the days of Noah. That's, that, that's, what I, that's what they heard. This is what, this is what the Pharisees would, would have heard. He's going to compare the days of Noah with a similar day. He says, okay, now, this is, this, we're going to make this comparison. In the days of Lot, even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. This is what it's going to be like now. 